Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's been a while since I've done a tutorial, but when I remembered this study and came back to it, I was thinking how beneficial it could be to every guitarist. And just to continue the title of the video, it is really the only study you need to continue the sentence if you are an intermediate or beginner guitarist and want to take your playing to a higher level. Okay, so I will start this tutorial by breaking it into two main parts. The first one would be dealing with fingerings. And the second one will be dealing with interpretation. I always find this study one that will really improve the coordination between the hands. And it is the study that really taught me what preparation can do and how preparation can be beneficial. I remember finding the study in the magazine Guitar Classic when I was first starting classical guitar, that was back in 2006-2007. Only until I learned how to prepare in the right hand could I play this at the specified tempo, Allegro Vivo. But you will gain most of the benefits if you play it at a moderate tempo. So you want to keep that in mind. So start at a slower BPM and uh, just make sure that you have this fluidity which is extremely important and the preparation in the hand is extremely important. So let's start here from the top. It is in D major, so you have this tonality and you see a lot of the A7 tonality that comes right after on the second beat, right? So he's arpeggiating over D major and then arpeggiating down on A7, right? So for it to be smooth, there are specific right hand fingerings that you need to do. It's extremely important to respect that as you play the piece because this is the sort of key to unlocking the beauty, really, of this piece. I'll include the score in the description section so you can follow along. There's a slur to start, right? So that... Aguado indicates P and then P again. And he is using the P a lot on those on the B and the D and the G strings. What I found, and actually the addition that I found when I first started was indicating a fingering where you play thumb first, slur, I M A M, and then I slur, prepare the A, A M slur I, and that prepares the P. You never really repeat the P twice, and that gives this. gives this fluidity that is also controllable so that you can do the dynamic indicated which is the hairpins as you see on the first measure. So he has the same thing for the second measure and then he has going up to the D. You're gonna basically work the same fingering in the right hand and then your I instead of it being starting the A7 chord gonna play the top D and then here in the fourth measure Aguado writes this figuration and then this I found that it could be easier to just play so to play simply the G and then open strings although the bass is held longer here 
that high speed, it is almost imperceptible, the cut of the bass, because of moving the finger. You almost can't really tell that it has lifted. Of course, if you listen carefully, you could, but... So with the study, you learn to do the sort of efficiency of movement. You want that absolutely as a must and the preparation in the right hand as you go up. Try both, of course. And then if you notice in the uh, old version, he has the A added on the last one, but he removed it in the subsequent editions. So you can choose whichever one you like, but coming from this, especially the beginning, even if you slur, it's, it's, it's tricky to get into this position, so you would want to try with a third finger and then settle into the D major. Second section starts, same idea, but it goes to this E major, well it's E7 actually because it starts with a D, right? So again, with those arpeggios you have to, after you slur, you have to have the IMA on the string and finish slur, I M A miss it when you do this preparation. If you have your fingers just flying in the air, you most likely won't. You might get it uh, perfectly, but you will have trouble speeding up. I want you to really focus on that preparation in the right hand. Focus on the coordination in the hands. Like so. And try to be a little more wavy in the, right, in the left hand. So like this. Instead of which works, but this sort of malleability in the left hand also creates gentle phrasing and, and can contribute to your musicality. Here you're gonna have to jump to this one. So if you notice in my recording, I take a little bit, not a breath really, but just a moment to lift the hand and not create any scratchy noise. And that really works to launch that next phrase. Again, the same finger. If you are playing on the A string, basically as a rule of thumb for me, how I did it is I do thumb thumb and I am a am I. So it's sort of this turn like this. Always this sort of this natural close of that circle. After you do this, you gotta shift here. The slurs you can add here and there, but don't add too many. The Aguado has them written down, so you can just follow them and you'll, uh, you'll, you'll have that fluidity. So, what's more important here in this study, and also to really improve your technique, is to respect that dotted quarter pulse, right? Even if you're slowing down before that recapitulation, right? So if you notice, I am It's extremely important because sometimes what tends to happen when we slow down is we stop feeling the main beat, something like that. And that is okay, but it does not contribute to the general flow of the piece, especially because it's this allegro vivo. Anytime you want to slow down, make sure to remind yourself of the main beat. That put aside, let's talk about the actual phrasing in tempo. You see those hairpins? So what I want you to practice is slow, make sure the notes have equal spaces between them. So never practice like, like really sort of burst through some notes just because you have the right hand prepared. Always gauge, listen to the connection of the notes. do to really make 
this hairpin come across is either a stroke with the eye or just emphasize the eye. So you're going towards this note. Another good tip is to let make sure that the strings are ringing. Practice to hear that E string to ring forward. Something like that. So that you have that, I would say, lack of accent. Because sometimes when the string is stopped unintentionally, it sort of creates a bit of an accent, unwanted accent, right? So. And it also contributes to that swell in the dynamic. Then, another good point for musicality interpretation is to... So make sure that you don't cut that slide. Sometimes what happens is that we sort of play like this where we prepare. It's really a, a virtuosic actually study and imagine like a great virtuoso playing it. They will more likely be sort of sliding and sort of surfing on the neck, right? Rather than having these dry shifts. So they will do something, a little bit of a slide. stop at the top of the phrase sort of like one of my teachers used to say you know you would reach the top you don't want to go immediately down to the bottom you go up the mountain hill you want to enjoy the view a little bit you know so when you're here right a little bit of time up top on that note and then what you what you want to do is to try to connect the notes as much as possible so I know here it's tough to connect, but you're gonna have to work with the time. So you're gonna keep the time perfect by, by cutting the note before short. Right? Do not, do not try to play this F fully because you're gonna be out of time. Something like this. So lightness in the hand as much as possible and keep that in time. You also see that in the second section here. That's all good. Again here with the, sorry, back to this, the hairpin. Then you have Enjoy the mountain top. Cut this one so you can get into the body. And another trick I'll give you, play it dynamically less. Because usually when you play with the thumb, it's going to be loud, right? Something like that. And that's not, does not, again, contribute to this fluidity of the phrasing. Be very soft there with it. Huh? it you'll see. I mean, this will is sort of these little tricks is what really makes or breaks the interpretation in my mind. I find them to be extremely helpful, and I find that my technique gets better when I know what needs to be done in order to bring out the essence of the music. Right here, you have. This feel. This is the essence of it. This is study. So this sort of dance needs to stay at all costs. I will just slow down in that uh, sort of bridge area, right? right? I come a little bit louder there. At, 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 so, so to re-emphasize re the beginning of that, that, that's not, I mean, that's just interpretive choices dynamically. Nothing is written, really. But I would go back to doing that as well. And uh, one thing that, um, now listening back to my recording, I would probably do different fingering in this phrase. Right? I would do maybe one time, maybe the last time I would do... Like that. 
we're repeating it three times, right? And then we're in G major. So you see it three times, so probably the last one to change it before you enter into this rising arpeggio. And I, I, it's easier to get into this D major in the full shape and add that A in the end uh, as Aguado wrote it in his first edition. So I decided to do that just for the end. These are some tips about this beautiful study. Again, it's less than a minute. And truly, if you work on everything perfectly in the study and respect the tempo and try to push the tempo to a higher than you can, really, you use the metronome and try to really break through some of your own barriers, there's only one way to go is up, right? Of course, when you do this uh, kind of training, you have to make sure that your fingers and body and everything is relaxed and fluid and that you're dancing on the instrument. If you need any help with that, I have some very long really tutorials on YouTube talking about how the right hand should stay relaxed and what to do in order to keep it uh, easily going backwards to playing position. If you like this uh, tutorial and if you enjoyed it, you find any value in it, subscribe, leave a comment, uh, give a like and let me know if you want other uh, tutorials in the future. I personally enjoy teaching, so this is great and I hope it adds value to your practice. Thank you so much and see you next time.